Hey everybody, so as you know, I am working on the next few country episodes, which means this is gonna have to be a filler week. Now we've done administrative division videos before, like Russia, India, Brazil, and by popular demand, this episode is gonna be on the provinces and territories of Canada. Before we jump into it though, just gotta say thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A lot of you probably already know who they are. We're gonna get into it later, all right? But in the meantime, now like many other videos I've done, I feel like the best way to go about doing this video would probably be to have a native of Canada with me, and so with Without further ado, say hello to my former roommate and friend, Aaron. How's it going? All right, Aaron, explain uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And a uh, little disclaimer. So even though I am from Canada, uh, it is a very diverse and big nation. Some of these things may be a little inaccurate, but we'll do our best. We did quite a bit of research though, so I think most of it is accurate, but uh, yeah, just uh, Aaron approved. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Welcome to the sick crew. <laughs> <laughs> Before we jump into it, a little few side facts. Canada is the second largest country in the world, right after Russia, in terms of land area. The vast majority, at somewhere around 87% of the population of Canadians, live within 100 miles or 160 kilometers, for us Canadians, of the U.S. border. Cities are very far apart too, aren't they? Yeah, the country overall is very spaced out. So Canada is made up of 10 provinces and 3 territories. Aaron, explain, what exactly is a territory? A territory is different from a province, because provinces actually have their own government, the provincial government. Territory do not have that so all their laws and policies are done directly through the federal government plus they have like very little population right like, absolutely yeah the lowest populations and it's a well-known fact all Canadians have a secret stash of maple syrup on them at all times for maple syrup emergencies anyway without further ado let's jump into it Alberta capital Edmonton largest city Calgary uh, it's the rustic cowboy province of Canada they even have the Calgary stampede that takes place every year they're also kind of like the energy province they have a lot of oil you know there's a lot of big uh, oil in Industry out there. Uh, places like uh, the Athabasca Sands. Drumheller has that strange looking rock formation place. It's also known as like the dinosaur capital of the world. Uh, they also have lots of ranches and farms. They also have the largest national park, Wood Buffalo, as well as Banff National Park, which is arguably one of the most beautiful parks. Aaron, when you think of uh, people from Alberta, what kind of comes to mind? More conservative, outdoorsy, kind of cowboyish people. Uh, almost like a Texas of Canada. Texas of Canada. There yep. we go. And fun fact, Alberta is officially rat free. Uh, British Columbia, also known as BC. Uh, the capital is Victoria and the largest city is Vancouver. This is uh, kind of like the adventure province of Canada. Great mountains, a lot of biking and hiking and cool stuff you could do. Yeah. It's also kind of back up Hollywood or Hollywood of the North. So many movies and TV shows are filmed over here. It's just like you could use their backdrops. It's also the only province that touches the Pacific Ocean and also gets lots of rain. Uh, it's also home to the only true desert in Canada, the Okanagan. Aaron, what do you think when it comes to like British Columbia people? Generally like a sort of hippie West Coast vibe, a lot very trendy kind of hipstery. Oh yeah, they got a lot of uh, retirees too, something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, even my grandparents live out there, so. Oh, well, there you go. Affirmed. Manitoba, capital and largest city, Winnipeg. Uh, it's sort of the intro to the prairies. Uh, there's also a joke here that's said in Canada that the people there always say, we were born here, what's your excuse? <laughs> there's a lot of lakes here. It's kind of like the lake province and a lot of people from the First Nations or the Native Americans, they have a lot of influence over this area. And further up north, you find Churchill, one of the only few settlements on the Hudson's Bay, locally known as polar bear capital of the world. Oh, and uh, Winnipeg is kind of known as the murder capital of Canada. I think in one year they had six murders. Oh, oh, oh all six. What are we out. ever gonna do? Oh, it's a war zone out there. No, but seriously, they got a lot of cool stuff. There's like a really nice looking human rights museum. There's that bridge. I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't really meet a lot of people in Manitoba, so I don't really have much of an opinion. But I'm guessing you're probably outdoorsy, rugged types if you're gonna be out in Manitoba where it's cold and there's polar bears. So New Brunswick, the capital, <laughs> capital of Fredericton and largest city Moncton. This is kind of known as the loyalist province because a lot of the people that were loyal to the British Empire during the American Revolution fled to this place. Yeah, and some people also might call it Petit Quebec, uh, as the second most populous French-speaking province, and is the also the only officially bilingual province. I like how you guys say that, bilingual. I yeah. Say bilingual. We, we enunciate well. Yeah, historically they were part of Acadia, the French-speaking area of Canada. And fun fact, this is actually basically where the Cajun people came from. They actually migrated from Canada into Louisiana, so that's where we get Cajuns from. And again, it's a maritime province, so you get lots of lighthouses, fishing, rappelling off of cliffs. Uh, it has a Bay of Fundy with the biggest tidal change in the world at over 16 meters or 53 feet for you Americans out there. Newfin- Newfinland- How do you guys pronounce it? Newfin Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Put the emphasis on the new, not the, not the fin, which is like an FN. I 
not even an I. Because I pronounced it New Finland before, but all yeah. the Canadians are like, no, that's not how you say it. Because well, it's not blurry. Anyway, the largest city and capital is St. John's. It is the easternmost province and split into two parts, one being Newfoundland, where about 90% of the population lives, and Labrador, which mostly cuts off Quebec from the Atlantic. <laughs> Take that, Quebec. And, fun <laughs> fact, they have their own time zone. Yeah, it's a half hour difference. Fun fact, this is actually the newest province established in 1949. Basically, it was like the UK's last colonial stronghold in America until they had a referendum and then they were ceded back to Canada. So yeah, the people here are known for being super nice and friendly, but they have a very strange accent. Aaron, how would you describe it? Almost Canadian Irish, <laughs> um, because there were a lot of Irish settlers there. Aaron, can you do the accent? Absolutely not. Then here's a clip. See, boys don't mind if I like chop cigarette, yeah? Well, actually, I have asthma, so... Don't worry, I don't mind, boy. If it gets too much, just roll down the window, you suck baby. Put that up, boy, I'm froze dead. Nova Scotia, capital and largest city, Halifax. This is the Seaboard Coast, or Canada's ocean playground, as placed on their license plates. Uh, basically, this is the place where Scotland tried to start a colony. Although it didn't quite work out, the residents still kept true to their traditions, even to this day. And thus the name Nova Scotia, meaning New Scotland. They even have a small but kind of diminishing Scottish Gaelic speaking community. You can find them every so often here and there. Yeah, and there's this place called Peggy's Cove. It has a somewhat famous lighthouse that everyone goes crazy after for some reason. Peggy's Cove! And it's also where the show Trailer Park Boys is set. Well, there was also like this huge explosion in 1917. It was like the largest man-made explosion prior to the invention of nuclear bombs. Two ships collide into each other and one of them happening to be an ammunitions ship. The whole city was destroyed, many people died. It's not a pleasant time. Think about it, in Canada. Ontario, the capital Ottawa, largest city Toronto, this is your province. Indeed it is. The most populous province with about 40% of the country's entire population. Entire country. This is basically the nucleus that powers much of Canada politically and economically. It's got the southernmost part of Canada in it and there's so many things going on like mining, tourism, the service sector, manufacturing, agriculture. Honestly, the province can really be divided into two separate parts. There's Northern and Southern Ontario. Now, Northern Ontario is what people where I'm from would call cottage country. It's spread out, there's a less of an urban vibe. Whereas Southern Ontario is a lot more urban, a lot more developed. Well, and speaking of politics, remember most politicians in Canada have to be bilingual, well, mostly because Quebec. That one province. Prince Edward Island, also known as PEI to its friends. Capital and largest city is Charlatan. Sounds like the word charlatan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I'm actually pronouncing that right. But that's how I grew up pronouncing it. This place has many nicknames. Spud Island, the Garden of the Gulf, the Million Acre Farm. It's the smallest and least populated province of Canada. But keep in mind the territories have even fewer people than that. Now this place is known mostly for Anne of Green Gables, the book. And uh, they also grow a lot of potatoes and there's those really cool beaches with sand that squeaks when you step on it. When I think of PEI, I think of people running through grassy fields wearing 1800s clothes. Clearly. Thanks, Anne of Green Gables. Yeah, that's that's all you people are. You wear 150-year-old clothing. Quebec, the capital city being Quebec City. Largest city, of course, being Montreal or Montréal. Originally known as La Belle Provence, meaning the beautiful province. But now on the license plates, it says, Je me souviens, which means... I remember, which is kind of like throwing shade at the English for treating the Acadians and French Canadians bad. Yeah, history. It's yeah, kind of yeah. deserved. Yeah. They are the largest province in size. Obviously, they are the French-speaking province. It's actually their only official language. However, most people in most major cities are bilingual with English. Yeah, everything from TV, radio, newspapers, schools are in French. Quebec is actually the only province in Canada I have been to, and I noticed when I was there, they speak French a little differently. To me, it sounds a little more twangy and kind of gut like regarde la or, I don't know it's hard to explain and also I noticed they used a lot of different words it's kind of like they condense it like instead of saying qu'est-ce que they say qu'est-ce fun fact traffic lights are also sideways also the food they're known for inventing poutine or poutine uh, they're also the largest supplier of maple syrup and they even have the world's largest maple syrup reserve Saskatchewan capital city Regina he's a 12 year old <laughs> largest city Saskatoon this is the prairie province the breadbasket of Canada this is the flattest part of Canada Kind of like Iowa or Nebraska. They've got lots of wheat fields and they grow the most crops. Uh, they're also kind of known as the Tornado Alley of Canada. I don't know. I feel like Saskatchewan is kind of like the place where you would go to like run from the law. Cornfields. Nobody's nobody's going to want to go all the way to Saskatchewan to catch you. I mean, come on. What do you think about Saskatchewan people? They're probably nice. I've never actually met anyone from Saskatchewan. I assume there's some nice country folk. Running from the law. And now we reach the territories. Together they only have a combined population of less than 200 
thousand. All three of them. Yeah, it's like really hard to live here. It's like super cold like most of the year and it lies on the barren Canadian shield. Yeah, most of the people who are out there are either there for the mining industry or they're the native people who live there. So, Definitely. here they are. The Northwest Territories, capital, Yellowknife. It is Canada's last frontier and polar bear land. Fun fact, they have 11 official languages, nine in addition to English and French. Most of them are from various native tribes like the Cree, the Slavey, the Chippewa, or the Quichin, and like a ton of others. And it has the largest non-shared lake, also known as Great Slave Lake, and named after the Slavey people. Not slaves, Slavey, it's a tribe. Also known as the Dene people, which are actually the ancestors of the Navajo, which live in Arizona. See how we get like a lot of, there's so much connection between these two land masses, you know? It's just like, we, we take your people. <laughs> that comes out wrong. <laughs> we take your people from your land. Yeah, we kidnap Canadians. None of it. Capital Ikaliwit. That's how you pronounce it. None of it, right? Not wrong. I mean, that's how I pronounce it. Land of the Midnight Sun. Probably the most isolated and obscure territory, as there are no roads that connect to it directly from the rest of Canada. So you can only fly or sail. This is actually the newest addition to the Confederation of Canada. It actually split off from the Northwest Territories back in 1999. This territory is predominantly inhabited by the native Inuktitut and Inuinaktun peoples. Woo! They actually have their own writing system. It's pretty cool. You can see it on like street signs. And yeah, they just got their own like traditions and customs and stuff like that. It's, it's uh, yeah, really interesting. And it also holds Paul's favorite island that he's affectionately named Pancake Island. It's the uh, island inside the lake, inside the island, inside the lake, inside of Victoria Island. It's, yeah, yeah, I want to go there someday. And finally, the last one, Yukon, sometimes referred to as the Yukon. Capital, Whitehorse. It is the least populated of all the territories. It is also known as the Gold Rush Territory, known for the Klondike Gold Rush, and also the westernmost territory bordering Alaska. It also has Mount Logan, Canada's tallest mountain. It's kind of like Alaska's girlfriend. So many people cross the border and yeah. It's a, yeah, they're just like, you, you, you gotta have Alaska and Yukon working together. They're just right next to each other. And that is it. All the 13 provinces and territories of Canada. High five. <laughs> I don't think we offended too many people in this one. Oh, um, I, I hope not. I, I apologize if I offended anyone. It's <laughs> That is it's, so Canadian of you. I mean, we're, we're known for being nice. Quick question. How many people in Canada actually say sorry? A lot. Even my dad actually says sorry. Are you serious? That's yeah. actually a thing? I mean, if you look at the word, it's it's spelled with an O, so it should be pronounced sorry. I thought sorry. that was a joke, but that's actually a thing. Yeah, people say sorry. I mean, there are laws in Canada that state that saying sorry is not an admission of guilt. <laughs> well, guys, uh, that is all of it. Um, so I'm going to ask Aaron to conclude everything but before we do just quickly this episode is brought to you by Squarespace for those of you who don't know Squarespace is a website where you can make a website if you go to the website you can see a lot of options and pre-made templates you can use it's a very great resource and very simple and easy to use just go to the website click around see what you like and go from there and if you go to squarespace.com slash geography now you can get a 10% discount on your first purchase thank you Squarespace Square face. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Sorry. <laughs> Squarepace! Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. All right, uh, Aaron, how would you just conclude this whole video? Canada's a vast and diverse nation of awesome scenery and awesome people, and I hope people are encouraged to go check it out and visit Canada. All right, well, that's just about it, and thank you for watching this episode of Filler Week. Hope you have a good one. Stay cool, stay tuned.